Hey friends, today's video is one that I have been thinking about doing for quite a while. It is focused on fragrances that have fabulous openings. The top notes are just wonderful. It opens with something alluring, intoxicating, compelling, intriguing, inviting, warming something, something that just makes you go, mm, this is so good. <laughs> I think I have 10 today and an honorable mention. Let's get right to it. The first one, and this is the fragrance that really made me think about doing this kind of video a while back. This winter I purchased Tokyo Milk Dark Bulletproof, and I thought I had found the one, the signature fragrance, that scent, that smell that I wanted to reincarnate into. <laughs> If there's such a thing as reincarnation, I'd want to come back as that fragrance. Um, and then, this is not the case for all the fragrances, but it is the case for this one, that the dry down was just okay. Nothing wrong with this. I will certainly continue to wear this fragrance and enjoy it, but it was nothing as wonderful as the opening of this. So let's check it out together. So let me say that this isn't a fragrance for everyone to begin with. You know that I'm that person that likes weird, different, and wonderful fragrances that maybe other folks would really shy away from. This one has the notes right on the back, which I love. Smoked tea, smoked, smoking. Smoked tea, coconut milk, crushed cedar, and this, I think it's a fantasy note called Ebony, Ebony Woods. But this opens up like incensey, super woody and green to me in a way that just got me like, ooh, this is that different, mysterious signature scent that's like on the edge. It's not a feminine fragrance, by the way. This leans masculine, but there's something about it that was just like perfect for me and my personality, especially in the winter. Um, but the issue is, this opens so beautiful and intriguing and different and then dries down into just this really nice incense scent that, like I said, I'll still enjoy. But it's nothing like that opening that just took me away to Woody Coconut. I can't talk today. Took me away to a Woody Coconut green tea kind of paradise. Tokyo Milk Dark bulletproof look at that bottle hello next is a fragrance that i purchased this summer summer 2021 uh, girl of now shine i have the just the girl of now which i love love that pistachio almondy just sweet delicious opening but heard maria collette talking about this one and it's pineapple note at the top and the way that she talked about it i just knew i had to go out and have it as well and boy do i not have not a single regret love this fragrance but there's no question that the most intoxicating part of this fragrance is the opening where you get pistachio you get pear, you get pineapple and orange. This is a fragrance that makes the heavens open up for me. At the top, it's beautiful also on the dry down, one that's lovely to wear all day, but the really intoxicating phase of this fragrance is the opening and as it goes into the middle with some white florals, a lang a lang, mm, and a bitter almond note. But that pineapple, pistachio, pear thing happening at the top, divine. Girl of now shine, excellent opening. Now we have Dolce Garden from Dolce & Gabbana, a beautiful tropical yellow and white floral mix. So this is nice on the dry down also. Let me be clear, most of these are great on the dry down as well. But this has some delicious like guava it doesn't have this as a note let me be clear the top notes listed are magnolia mandarin orange and neroli but whatever they did to this it smells to my nose like a sweet guava a mango pineapple mixture at the top like this uber fruity almost um like to the point it's so ripe it's close to being rotten kind of smell 
extra extra fruity and juicy at the opening it does settle down into this more like coconut frangipani kind of scent with some alang alang has vanilla almond milk some sandalwood but that opening is just like if you're into like that uber fruity like deep tropical fruit kind of smell even though like i said it's not in the top notes however this is composed takes me straight into a bowl of the juiciest fleshiest <laughs> fleshiest where do i get this stuff from fleshiest uh tropical fruit Ooh, dolce garden sticking with tropical fragrances i have the queen the queen of tropical fragrances and it is terracotta le parfum from guerlain listen <laughs> If you don't have this in your collection, I don't really like telling people they need fragrances, but if you are into tropical scents, especially ones that are sort of beachy and suntanny and tropical fruit flower-ish, Terracotta is your lady. And she is a lady, not a little girl. <laughs> this is a grown woman's tropical fragrance. And what I love about this is that you get this immediate burst of a little bit of citrus, just a hint of sharp citrus, but it's mostly like this creamy, smooth tiara flower and coconut at the top. You also get like the most luxurious suntan lotion mixed in there too. And it's all light and subtle. There's nothing loud, obnoxious, cloying, overbearing, overpowering about terracotta. This is like the classiest fragrance lady of the bunch. Ah, oh, love this. Excellent opening, excellent dry down and finish as well. By the way, excellent base, uh, base notes. But Terracotta Le Parfum, the opening of this is wonderful, magnificent, tropical delight, deliciousness. Another gorgeous opening on a fragrance. <laughs> So people hear me talk about this and they're like, really? That? And the answer is yes. It is Ariana Grande Thank You Next. Yes, I hate this packaging. We've talked about this. The little My Little Pony playset plastic thing. <laughs> the actual bottle's okay. This, oh, I love the opening of this. It immediately transports me to like a summer party, a summer barbecue, uh, a summer hanging out at the beach under the umbrellas, eating sandwiches and listening to good music and drinking virgin pina coladas or spiked ones, whatever's your pleasure. You have pear and raspberry at the top here, but you also have that coconut peeking through right away. And this really like young, vibrant, fun rose note. All of that combines into, to me, like one of the happiest openings on a fragrance ever. Ariana Grande, thank you, next. Thank you, Ariana, thank you. Sticking with the tropical theme, I didn't realize that I was doing this when I pulled <laughs> these fragrances. So come fall and winter, I'll have to do like my second part two using deeper, more spicy, oody, like winter fragrances and all of that. But I have for you Harajuku Lovers Electric Pop G. This is what the bottle looks like and that's where the actual fragrance is. And you should see uh, Marcy from Marcelina Teresa do her review on this line and she talks about using these as finger puppets. How you doing? Yes, I am all the way goofy today. This is another just really fun tropical fragrance. This reminds me so much of this thing called like little coquitos that were sold when I was a kid in New York on the street. The guy would come with the little coquito bins like these um cylinders full of like this coconut icy creamy kind of thing it smells like that it smells like the mixture for pina colada it's just a fun happy fragrance doesn't last very long in fact the longevity is but <laughs> it lasts enough for me to enjoy it and it's so stinking cheap i have a backup of this i know so crazy this little bottle cost me maybe 12 bucks um and you know it's one that i'm happy to just reapply as often as needed 
to enjoy this super fun, playful, very playful pino colada, pino, a pina colada, pina colada, pina, <laughs> pina fragrance. Electric Pop G from Harajuku. This is a Gwen Stefani line of fragrances. Who doesn't love Gwen? Love me some Gwen. Here's one that got a little bit of love and hype on YouTube and then just sort of disappeared. It was sold at, ooh, I need a beverage. It was sold at Marshall's and I think it was TJ Maxx too for a while, which is when I got it. And it is Black Iris from Shanghai Tang. This bottle, y'all, is a total weapon. This thing weighs at least 489 pounds <laughs> easily without the cap. <laughs> I'm losing it, y'all. I'm being very silly. The opening of this is so beautiful if you like citrus and if you like tea fragrances. You get tea, you get orange and lemon at the top, and then as it, and it, it, it smells too like a rice tea. Have you ever had a rice tea? Is that a thing? Did I just make that up? Have I actually had rice tea? Have I had a cup of rice tea? I don't know if I'm making this up or lying to you guys. Let's just go with a bag of rice and let's go with sake <laughs> because those are the two things that this also reminds me of. Like the way that a bag of rice smells that like a little bit of powdery, ricey kind of raw rice kind of smell and what sake smells like combined with citrus and with lemon it's a beautiful opening rather intoxicating right away and develops gorgeously on the skin and then becomes a white floral and a little bit musky and vanilla-y in the base but that opening on this is like woof what is that shanghai tang black iris yeah from Laura Mercier's Eau Gourmand series, I have Ombre Vanille. I call this my ice cream fragrance. It's like, oh my gosh, this is like the opening of this is super strong and delicious, like ice cream, like custard, like creamy desserts mixed with a little bit of perfume as well. I know that sounds weird, but it works. There's something so beautiful and exactly as the name of the line says gourmand about this. Very edible, very sweet, uh, almost coconutty, like, like a coconut cream vanilla type of dessert uh, mixed up in maybe gelato form. I don't know, just something really just like yummy about this. Ombre Vanille from Laura Mercier, which is a makeup company, by the way. I am obsessed with this next fragrance. Not everyone is, and I appreciate that some people find it ho-hum. I can't get enough of it, especially the opening. It, for me, and my personal fragrance tastes, is one of the most beautiful openings in all of any fragrance that I have tried. Valentino Donna Aqua. I have two backups of this. That's how much I love it. I have another one in the smaller size and then I was lucky enough to find the 100 mil on Amazon. It is discontinued, I believe, and I don't know why, I don't understand. I know some people don't care for this, I don't get it. I always respect when people feel a different way about a fragrance, even if I don't get it, but that doesn't stop me from saying how much I love Valentino Donna Aqua, yes. <laughs> There's something about the opening of this. Does anybody remember the fragrance named, I think it was Body by Victoria's Secret. And it was just in a frosted plain bottle back in either the late 80s or early 90s that Victoria's Secret, when, when the catalog company was like all the rage. There was a fragrance called Body that I fell in love with. There was something just fresh and clean and feminine um, and transparent trans what word am i looking for i was gonna say transformative i'm not looking for transformative transports transportative transportive transport it transports me <laughs> somebody gave me a degree somewhere y'all i don't know they might need to take it back but anyway <laughs> this fragrance here 
It's almond and pear at the top and then in the middle frangipani and jasmine. I'm going to tell you, this opening is another one of those heavens opening up fragrances for me. It just, it takes me there. It takes me to a very happy place. It takes me to wonderful memories. It takes me to everything that is feminine and lovely and light and happy about this world. That is what the opening of Valentino Donna Aqua does for me. Now, if you like almond and if you like pear and you have to like frangipani too because that comes through and the jasmine, try this. If not, don't. And if you do try it and you don't like it, you will probably be able to sell it fairly quickly on eBay or Mercari or something like that because it is very hard to find. Now, here's a fragrance that some people love and other people are just like, I don't get the hype about it. I'm on the love side of this. The opening of this is magnificent. The rest is quite nice too, but it's the opening of La Nuit Tresor Nude that is intoxicating for me again and my fragrance taste. Now, Fragrantica says that it's just bergamot at the top. I have a hard time believing that and just rose in the middle and then coconut and vanilla in the base. I smell a lot more than bergamot at the top here. For me, that rose comes through right away. Some of that coconut as well. There's something really smooth, uh, rather creamy at the top here. Oh, it's also got that like vanilla ice cream smell at the top, all mixed. For me, I really like this. I love to spray this on myself. I wish that it was a little stronger. I wish that it projected farther and I wish that it lasted longer overall as a fragrance. But this video is about wonderful openings and this has a magnificent opening to me i can't get enough of it i get really happy and i feel very like feminine i'm in like my feminine goddess mode <laughs> when i spray this on on the days that i wear it wonderful fragrance to wear any time of day too it goes in the morning afternoon night running errands work fragrance it's everything it's beautiful to me la nuit trésor nude and the last one is my honorable mention, and I promise I'm going to come back with a part two soon, maybe early fall. I'd love to just keep doing this as I create the next list of fragrances that have just a beautiful opening. And by the way, if you're out there in YouTube land and a, and a creator, would love to see you do this. I didn't make this a tag or whatever, but would love to see you tell us what you think in your collection has the most beautiful opening notes. I think it's a fun concept. But my honorable mention is Kasamat Rasana from Razazi. This, and, and let me say, I get really funny when people are like, oh, this fragrance smells so expensive. What in the world does expensive smell like? <laughs> I just kind of have a hard time with the concept. I mean, I get it. I do. But at the same time, I just, anyway, we could have a whole conversation around the psychology and the sociology of what it means to smell expensive. Let me step down from my high horse. Kasamat Rasana smells, <laughs> hang on. I had a blooper and <laughs> dropped my blotter. So I sprayed it on myself. If something smells expensive, I think it's what this smells like in the opening, which is why it's in my honorable mention list. This also smells fantastic throughout, just to be clear, which is why it's an honorable mention. It's not that it smells so different later on. It does dry down a little bit different, but it's the opening here that has like this beautiful citrusy, leathery even. It smells like freshly minted money. <laughs> That's not why it smells expensive, but that scent combined with the others is just lovely. Hope you enjoyed this video. Did these choices make sense to you? Do you agree? Do you have any fragrances in your collection, whether you are a YouTube fragrance reviewer or an enthusiast out there in the world or a viewer? It doesn't really matter. Do you have fragrances in your collection that have awesome openings? Drop us a note in the comments to share. Hope you enjoyed. Have a fabulous day. Take care, friends.